What's going on guys? So I had a request from someone um, uh, to make a video on the limitations of Anki. And I want to do that because I think as someone who's made a lot of videos on Anki, I think people often misconstrue the fact that I like love it. And I totally do think it's a great app, but I also know its limitations and I want to share them with you so that way you can use it better. So let's get to it. All right, so let's get into it. I will be going over five limitations, and in each of these limitations, I'm gonna tell you what the limitation is, and after I go into a bit of detail about the limitation, I will give you a way to get around that limitation. Because as I said, the point of this presentation is to acknowledge that there always are limitations to the tools that we use to learn, but at the same time, if we can understand these limitations, we can better address them. So, with that being said, the general gist is I want to get across in this presentation that Anki is not the solution to all your problems. I know I'm a huge advocate and proponent of Anki, and I think this often, again, gets misconstrued with the fact that I'm like, oh, gung-ho, like just do Anki and you'll be fine. That's not necessarily true. Anki is a very, very valuable tool, but it's not a replacement for like everything. You know, you can't just do Anki and expect life to be perfectly okay. So. I'm an advocate of Anki because if you use it well, it is probably one of the most efficient tools in your toolkit, but that doesn't mean it should be the only thing in your toolkit. And so today I'm going to go over some of the shortcomings of Anki, and we're going to go through why Anki is a great tool, but why it still needs to be supplemented with other learning tools to ensure you get the most bang for your buck when you're doing Anki. And the tips I'm going to talk about today can be applied more broadly to flashcards, but we're going to talk briefly about Anki. So number one, the biggest short limitation of Anki is that Anki is not good at hitting big foundations, right? Anki is a flashcard app and the flashcards are intended to solidify uh, small concepts. However, when you try to use Anki to hit big concepts, that's when it breaks down. Because as I said, big concepts are an aggregate of small concepts. And so you need to use Anki for the small concepts, but for the bigger concepts themselves, those need to be internally understood. And what I mean by this is, for example, when you learn the fundamentals of protein structure, you conceptually would need to know primary structure is governed by the sequence of amino acids. Secondary structure is when you have hydrogen bonds between, um, between the um, amine groups and the uh, hydroxyl group, right? And then tertiary structure is when you have disulfide bonds and quaternary structure is when you have uh, interactions between proteins. Notice that all of that is a conceptual understanding of protein structure. I can make flashcards on each of those facets, but if I don't understand the big broad picture that is protein structure, those cards end up being useless. Another way to understand this is I'm doing business school right now, right? And in business school, I'm doing accounting. And in accounting, there is a fundamental equation that says assets is equal to liabilities plus equities. I can put that into a flashcard and memorize it, but that still doesn't address the big picture fact of what the hell is an asset and why does asset always equal to liability and equity, right? Like, why is that true? What exactly is the meaning behind this equation? So me just memorizing this isn't going to be good. I need to understand the big foundation about assets, liabilities, and equities before I start memorizing the details of this equation. So the one way to get around this, this limitation of Anki and the fact that it's not good at hitting big foundations is that Anki should never ever be your first way that you approach a material. So the first time you see something, whether that's a protein structure concept or it's a concept about equilibrium in economics, whatever it is, you should never use Anki as your first time that you're seeing it. If anything, watch a lecture, watch a video, understand the concept, write some notes about it, and then transfer those notes onto Anki, and then make flashcards from them. Because if you just skip straight to Anki, and you know, are using pre-made decks or pre-made cards, you'll see that it doesn't work because you will never get the big idea of the big foundations. The next big limitation of Anki is that Anki is not a substitute for critical thinking. This kind of hits on the previous point, but it's slightly different. Anki helps to solidify facts, but it does very little to substantiate critical thinking. Uh, and this is going to become a lot more clear when I give you examples. But one of the reasons why Anki doesn't work much for physics or math is because if you ever wonder about classes like physics and math, they often always even let you 
have cheat sheets, right? Like when you take a phys physics test, or even when you take the AP physics test, most of the formulas are provided there for you. They don't care about the memorization. In physics and math, they're expecting you to take these fundamental ideas of theorems and postulates, and then they flip them on their head and ask them to you in all sorts of ways, right? And that's why Anki isn't particularly uh, great at physics and math. Like you can't memorize physics and math because that requires understanding a fundamental thing and flipping it on its head to critically think about it, right? So for that reason, the same thing can be applied to medicine. Though medicine does require a lot more memorization, and that's why Anki is good for it, a large chunk of medicine, and especially step one and step two, also require a hard amount of critical thinking. And so for that reason, do not fall into the trap of thinking that you can just memorize every presentation of a disease. You cannot. Appendicitis can sometimes present as left lower quadrant pain and sometimes also as right lower quadrant pain. There are so many different ways things will present. And sometimes, because we're so used to just trying to memorize everything, we get caught up in thinking, oh, I'm just going to memorize this. I'm going to memorize every damn presentation of every possible disease in every possible way. And Anki makes you feel like you can do that because it's such, a, such an awesome tool. But the problem is it's not a replacement for critical thinking. So just because you think you can memorize every presentation of a disease, which you can't, uh, but even if you did, it still wouldn't work because Anki is not good at showing you that. You would just not be able to do it. So to get around this, you'll realize that Anki is great to solidify factual concepts, but to get around this, do problems, right? Do problems. Problems should always be your number one thing and then flashcards. So that's why UWorld and even for the MCAT, UWorld is always the number one tier. If you, if you had to pick, let's say you only had a week left for your test and you said, should I do questions or should I do flashcards? More often than not, questions is the right answer because questions train you to think critically. And then when you actually get things wrong, you can see where are the flaws in my reasoning. And that's when you can actually make flashcards to say, oh, my flaw is right here in this critical thinking. And that's where I'm going to make a flashcard. But by no means just assume that you're just going to memorize everything. That's not how things will work. Try to do things that will facilitate critical thinking and then use Anki to fill in the gaps. The third limitation of Anki is that more cards is not necessarily better. The user interface of Anki is such that you actually like love making cards. Like Anki is so good because it's so easy to make hundreds of cards in a matter of minutes. And I know this because I've made like thousands of cards in weeks, right? And it's so easy to make cards on Anki. And it's also so easy to convince yourself, oh, wow, I'm going to make all these cards and then I'm just going to know everything because I'll just memorize it and I'll just do the cards. That is a huge limitation of Anki because that's not true, right? It's very easy to make a bunch of cards, but more cards is not necessarily better. As someone who did more than 15 to 1600 cards a day, I can tell you that I was the smartest when I was doing maybe 300 to 600 cards a day. Any more than that, I was actually wasting a lot of time doing so many cards that I was not able to spend my time doing other things to facilitate my critical thinking. I was just like, I'm going to memorize everything. And I spent so much time trying to memorize everything that my critical thinking fell short. Right, So this is where my step two anecdote is going to come in. When I was studying for step two, I got so burnt out that I stopped doing Anki. Like uh, two, 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 three weeks before my test, I just stopped doing it. Because I was like, I don't want to do like 1,200 cards a day. This is exhausting. So I just did like 30 to 40 minutes of cards a day. And I was just okay with whatever I didn't get to. And guess what? My performance went back up again afterwards. And so I realized like, oh my God, me not doing a bunch of cards was actually helpful because I had already done really well with memorizing things. I needed to use that extra time to facilitate my critical thinking, right? And so the, to get around this limitation, the golden rule that I have for Anki is it is always better to finish all of your cards and know that you didn't make that many cards than to make a bunch of cards and not be able to get to them at all. I would much rather you, if you had a series of 20 lectures you're being tested on, make 10 cards for each lecture and then get through all 200 and know them all really well than to make 200 cards for every lecture and not be even able to touch all of them, right? So it's much better to make fewer cards and get through all of them than it is to make a ton of cards and not get through any. And I'm telling you this from experience, 100%, if you can make fewer cards and get through all of them, you will be much better off because you have the holistic understanding and actually be, be able to tie up your loose ends.
All right. Next one. The number four thing in terms of a limitation is that Anki's wrong key is not enough of a negative stimulus, right? And what do I mean by this? Let's say you're doing your flashcards and you come across a card that you don't know. Most of us just press don't know and you move on. In Anki, I don't like that because that is not strong enough of a stimulus. If you really want to learn something, the moment you get it wrong, you need to spend a lot more time than just pressing a button and being like, I'll come back to it later. That is not enough of a strong negative stimulus for you to actually retain it. And at least for someone like me, uh, who really does need to spend a lot more time when you get something wrong and be like, why did I get this wrong? What do I not understand here? I found myself sometimes just going through cards over and over again, and I would get the same one wrong like 15, 20 times because Anki makes it so easy to just be like, ah, I don't know. I'll come back to it later. You just press a button and it just goes away. That is a huge limitation of Anki because that is making you feel like, uh, I'll come back to it later. And that wastes a lot more time. If you just took 10, 15, 20 seconds for a card that you got wrong, you sat there and you were like, hmm, what do I not get here? You'd get a lot more out of it, right? So to get around this, and this is also something I've learned, is if you find yourself getting a card wrong multiple times, take a few extra seconds and actually write out the card that you're getting wrong, right? This is actually a, f a feature on Quizlet. Um, when I was using Quizlet a lot, I love this feature. Whenever you get a card wrong on Quizlet, it actually forces you to type out the whole card. And as you're typing it out, what you're doing is you're giving your brain more time to think about why is it that you're getting this wrong. And when you give yourself that time, you also end up creating some sort of small mnemonic or maybe some sort of like freaky way to remember it because you give yourself a little bit more time and say, oh, okay, I really don't get this. This is one of those cards I have to spend a lot more extra time on. And that way it creates a hole in your brain and says, hey, you gotta, you gotta remember this next time. As opposed to an Anki, if you don't actually do that, Anki, it's so easy to just keep pressing one, keep press one, keep press one, keep press one. And you just will never know it, right? And so you actually need to take a lot of this um, uh, intentional uh, affirmation to actually be like, okay, I don't know this, I'm gonna physically write this card out and I guarantee you next time you see that card, it's gonna stick a bit better. Um, so, yes, and last but not least, the fifth limitation of Anki is Anki is really hard to use to cram for something. And I say this because when you use Anki and once you start doing flashcards, the interface is such that you're expected to do those cards every day. There is no pause button on Anki. They are just, the cards will just start piling up more and more and more, right? So you can leverage this, right? So this is a limitation of Anki, but I still think that you can leverage this aspect of Anki because believe it or not, when you do new cards, for me, having done as many cards as I have, I know for a fact when I do new cards, they are the most fresh in my brain for the first week that I do them. And then after that, it's all diminishing returns because I don't see those cards as frequently anymore. So I tend to forget uh, more. So knowing that your cards will be the most fresh in your brain about one week as you learn them, the way that I've gotten around this limitation that Anki is hard to use to cram for something is that if I want to cram for something, I will make cards for that subject, but I usually won't do them regularly until about a week before my test. A week before my test, I will then start picking up the pace at which I consume those cards. And of course, you want to have a manageable amount, right? This hits on one of our tips earlier, fewer cards, but try to get through them. But I would try to get through them all within that last week. And by doing that, as I said, because I remember the best within one week, by doing all of this in that last week, I actually facilitate remembering them quite well. And I've used this method to cram quite a bit, um, whether it be for you know a subject I'm trying to learn. I'm definitely gonna try to do this in business school and I'll keep you guys updated, but I'm pretty sure this is how it works. I've done it before, it does work. So with all that being said, I hope these five limitations made you realize Anki is not the end all be all, but also made you see, okay, how can I still continue to use these limitations and make it a little bit better for myself? But at the same time, know that Anki is definitely not a replacement for critical thinking and also not a replacement for genuine intellectual curiosity. It is a phenomenal learning tool, and I hope this video showed you how to use it a little bit better. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Peace.